Hello traders, welcome to the weekly market breakdown from April 7th to the 13th. Uh, please take a look, a moment to look at uh, our risk disclaimer and uh, I'm going to start in uh, just a little bit. All right, everybody, uh, big, big week ahead of us, but uh, uh, let's start like we always start by looking at how we finished last week. Uh, as you can see, I am... Uh, uh, well, I updated all of these trades that we opened last week, just today. Uh, we closed a, a short trade on the US dollar, Canadian dollar at plus 43 pips. Uh, uh, then we hit a 146 pip on the on the pound versus the yen. Uh, we lost 56 pips on gold, and but we still have two trades open. Uh, one on the GBPUSD and one short of gold from uh, 1306. So big week, we are up a thousand pips since we opened up this um, uh, Forex uh, channel on our signals community and we opened it up like three weeks ago. So we are averaging about 330 pips per week, which is a lot of pips if you ask me. But well, uh, if you want to join, I'm going to leave you um, a link below this video where you can get a free trial uh, for a month on our uh, Signal community. So let's go. Let's continue with the weekly market breakdown and let's go and take a look like we always do at the US dollar. Now, the US dollar, I mean... Uh, it's a tricky place where we are right now at the US dollar. Remember that we we were talking about the 9770 level, which is the highest that we are we have been unable to break uh for a while now. I mean, uh, if we go to uh, let's go to the daily chart so you can see how big this level is. I mean, we have been testing it since late uh, last year and we have hit this level once twice three times and now we are uh, Well about 40 ticks away from it. The thing is that we have been trading uh, uh, In an up structure because we have been making higher highs I mean higher lows higher lows higher lows higher lows higher lows But we have been stopped by this 9770 countless times so this means that i mean uh, what we are looking at here right now is what i like to call an ascending triangle and this is a very bullish uh, structure but remember that we are looking at the us dollar so uh, i mean uh, we don't focus uh, too much on uh, on structures when we're looking at the us dollar but most mostly at what's going on with um, e uh, monetary policies and uh, well, uh, the analytics that come out every single week. And um, at uh, last week's non-farm payrolls, well, where they were great, uh, the U.S. economy added 196,000 jobs um, in March, and uh, the expectations were. Uh, I don't remember correctly, but I think there were 172k jobs added, so they beat expectations. So very bullish for the US dollar, even though that we didn't get a very bullish move because we are getting, uh, we are topping here at the 161.8 extension of the first leg of the move up. So uh, we are still bullish in the US dollar. Remember that we were we, we talked about these two levels, the 96.50 and the 97 level, both two very important bases for a bullish move for example let me just show you with uh, uh, with arrows all right so basically we broke above uh, the uh, 9650 and then we tested it as a base we broke with the 97 level we hit the 161.8 of this leg up and then we have tested the 97 seven level again. All right. Now, this is a very important structure that we are dealing with in, in the US dollar because it's extremely, extremely bullish. And uh, if uh, uh, the data that's coming out of the USA keeps um, being good 
and the Fed. Well, we already know that uh, the last uh, economic outlook out of the FOMC was very, very dovish because they see no rate increases this year and just one next year, right? But I don't know if you noticed uh, during the weekend that President Trump, or la at the end last week, President Trump uh, told uh, the press that what he would want is to the Fed to start uh, uh uh, cutting rates instead of uh, hiking them. So, uh, I mean, um, I, I don't know what to think about what President Trump is thinking, but uh, that is not what the Fed is doing, right? So, uh, basically, mixed uh, languages coming from uh, both sides in the U.S., but of course that we are going to keep... Uh, our eyes on what the Fed actually does, not what Trump says. But uh, uh, we remain very bullish on the US dollar, like I told you before, and this is the structure that we are looking at, all right? This very bullish structure starting at the 95.80 level, basing at the 96.50, and basing again at the 97 level. So basically what we need to do is just break with this high, at the 97.50 level, all right, and these bullish targets uh, for a retest of the 97.70. Now, uh, having said that, let's have a look at uh, the euro versus the U.S. dollar. Now, if you if you remember um, last week, we were talking about this level on the euro versus the U.S. dollar. Now, uh, we were talking about a possible short position on a good um, on a good non-farm payrolls, but I told you that uh, for me um, it was really, really uh, not a good place to be sell, uh, trying to sell the euro US dollar because this this is a very um, um, extended move to the downside, right? And we also have this level, which is a very big level. Uh, let me just uh, I'm going to thicken this, right? like this and uh, I, I'm actually um, trying to use uh, the same um, lines and colors for the for these same important levels and uh, as you as you already know I use the blue uh, for important levels this level to the upside and this level to the downside big 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 range that we are going to be playing uh, this week for a possible 200 pip win, right? Um, but if you, I mean, if you look at the level that, that we are looking at, um, let me just grab the horizontal ray and put it right here. So basically this is a very important zone of support, okay? Uh, we tested it here once to complete what, uh, well, to complete this um, uh, range move, and then we tested it again here, and right now, it seems that um, we have found buyers here on the euro US dollar and we are going to be moving up okay a uh, very extended move to the downside we are looking to the upside on the euro US dollar and of course we are going to be sending the signal on the euro US dollar uh, in our premium um, signal community just after I finish up with this video so if you want to get it, by all means, subscribe with the link that I posted at the bottom of this video and you will get your trial for a month. Don't miss out, guys. This is great value, all right? So let's get a clear look at gold, all right? Shall we? Yeah, of course. So gold, I mean, we have been tracking gold for ages and you know that, that this is one of my favorite uh, products to trade. And um, let's go to, uh, let's thicken this uh, right out here, all right? So basically, what we were looking at, let me just, again, color this blue, because blue is the color of a big, big level in my charts, all right? So yeah, very bullish moving gold. We were short, actually, all right? Let me just stop moving the chart. <laughs> we were shorts, uh, our shorts started here when we broke um yeah when we broke um uh with this um, continuation structure and uh, we closed half 
right here at this very big volume zone all right this is a point of control of the entire move to the upside and, uh, and not, not only the, the entire move to the upside but i mean it's the point of control since uh, november uh, uh, uh 28 2018 so big 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 volume zone here big peel point of control and uh, here is where uh, big buyers were going to be positioned, but I mean we actually stayed short because of this very big move to the downside All right, this was very bearish and then we started to trade inside of this um, well It's not a flag right, but it is and it looked like a um, reversal pattern but the thing is that we uh, we kept half of our trade open because um, we don't know what's going to happen, right? I mean, uh, nobody can predict the future. Nobody can see future auction. And uh, uh, what we need, what we do here, or what I do the way I trade is that I protect myself. I protect my open trades, right? I take profit, protect my open trades. Of course, our our stops are above these highs, and it looks like we're going to get stopped, at, but we don't know that yet, right? And uh, the reason that we didn't close all of our trade, all of our position here, is because if we, if we, if a price broke. Uh, with the, the 1278 level, um, there were chances that we were going to be testing this trend line, the white uh, trend line that uh, you can see here, the white dotted trend line, and maybe a test of this big level right here, right? This high is right here, very important level at uh, the 1232 level, and which is also the 161.8 of the first uh, leg. Uh, down which is are my bullish targets always so um, but it seems like we are going to be um, going up in gold um, we are short of course that if price continue, continues to trade up we are get, going to get uh, stopped out with a win in gold remember we are on a free trade but the levels that we are going to be looking at are the highest here the 1318 level for a possible let me just grab again my uh, uh, my arrow uh, maybe for a possible move uh, like this I need to stay in my drawing mode like this right and maybe a possible uh, test of these highs at the 1347 level again um, it looks like we are going to be going up and not down, but this is a possible scenario. And of course, this is the 1318 level that we are going to be looking at. Okay, now let's continue and let's look at the pound versus the yen. No, the pound versus the US dollar. I'm sorry about that, guys. So basically what we are looking here is our short position on the pound versus the dollar last week. We entered right here. Uh, the test of these highs, all right. As you can see, uh, my, by my uh, again, this is not the uh, the color that I use, nor the uh, lines that I use. Well, well, I'm going to use a plain line. That's fine, but that's not the green that I use because that's the green I use in my candles and can be a little bit confusing. But I do use a darker green. Uh, for my levels and I think I'll be changing that because it, it is a, a little bit confusing actually I'm going to change it right now I'm sorry about that guys, but you have to bear with me because um, I can't stand a, a non-clean chart. So um, Let's have maybe a um, pink Yeah, I love pink pink is my jam pink is my color All right, so if you look at what happened here, we took the trade right here uh, when uh, we tested the 131.70, no, the 131.75 level, which is the 76.4 retracement of this move down, right? And, uh, uh, well, what we did here is that uh, we took half of our position at the test of these lows. This is a very important level, guys. I know that the point of control is all the way up at the at the round number but it's but uh this the 129.90 90 level these 10 pips are very important support in the um, in the pound versus the dollar 
So uh, basically what we did here is that we shorted the pound versus the dollar and we took profits right here and we move our stops to break even because, uh, well, because we, we have uh, the um, GDP out of the UK and it's not looking very good and because of Brexit, guys. I mean, this is just a claw. I mean, uh, it's just a disaster what had happened here uh, in the UK. It's a joke. And I thought that, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, things were out of control in the U.S., but I mean, what's going on in the, the U.K. Parliament is something that I had never seen. So let me resume uh, you what, what has happened in the uh, in the U.K. about Brexit. Basically, um, PM May, uh, the Prime Minister May, struck a deal with the uh, European Union for the U.K. to live with a deal, right? What happened is that the parliament has blocked or has outvoted, uh, has not voted uh, three times that deal in parliament, but has uh, uh, but has uh, taken off the table a known Brexit option. So basically, what the option, the options that the UK has right now is that, or they do vote in a deal, or they don't live at all. Which is, I mean, which is which, which can be uh, i mean not even the uk can be as bad uh for the pound as living without a deal and i really do think that the if this is i mean if if this doesn't get worked out this week we are going to be breaking with these lows on the pound which is why uh we are sticking on with uh half of our position short all right and uh the thing is also that um uh, they keep asking the the uh, I mean uh, they keep asking the uh, uh, for a negotiation for a delay on Brexit until June the first I think I don't remember the exact date but that hasn't been voted in and, and I don't think that the uh, European Union is going to be voting for a delay without justification uh, which the UK does not have so on that side we are going to be. Uh, staying with our short position that we again we enter right here at uh, this bounce of the 131 uh, uh, I mean I'm sorry yeah the 131.75 level and we are going to be waiting for that break to the downside if nothing happens and if uh, I mean and if um, we start trading up well we're going to be taking out at break even but we already but we already um uh, took half of our position, so we made 146 pips, uh, and I am willing to risk the, these 146 pips that we have on the table for a breakdown of this uh, level, which would mean that we could be adding another 200 pips to our trade. So, in my eyes, it's a risk that I'm willing to take. Some of uh, our premium members have closed their entire position at plus 145 pips which is completely fine i mean you don't have to follow everything i do uh in fact what you what what uh, what i mean what uh, i'm asking you to do is uh, uh always to question my trades uh, my trade ideas because uh, because if we do we learn from each other right and that's the goal of this entire um uh, well, this entire idea. So let's go and have a look at the US dollar Japanese yen. All right, so the US dollar versus Japanese yen is uh, at a very interesting level. We, uh, I mean, we broke with this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, with this. Uh, what is this? With this trend line, right? Uh, I saw a lot of people getting caught in this short position. And uh, I, I mean, I knew that it was very, uh, uh, it was way too soon to be shorting, and people were shorting this uh, even before the non-farm payrolls, right? Uh, with a good expectation on the U.S. jobs, and uh, this being the U.S. dollar against the Japanese yen, I mean, too in my eyes, that was just a dumb move. And uh, I mean, uh, there were some good um, idea. Well, the idea behind a short here at this level was not that bad. The thing is that people that short uh, trend lines usually put their stops 
uh, just above the trend lines. And if you're shortening the trend line, you should be putting your stops above above the high, the first high in this case of the trend line, right? Which in this case, I mean, I know that if you play with a tight risk managing, your position would be would be um, um, smaller, but it doesn't matter uh, because uh, uh, you will be getting stopped out less less times than if you use a uh, uh, a tight stop with a big uh, lotage or a big lot trade all right so basically yeah people got uh, people got um, trapped in this in this um, uh, bull trap but now I mean we broke to the upside and now we're testing again these levels all right we're testing this point of control I mean actually this trend line I'm gonna use my pink color again I need to use templates actually I'm going to start using templates uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to use my pink color because I mean it's not a big big trend line in my eyes But this it, there's something that I need to be looking at but not as a strong strong level So basically yeah, I'm looking at this point of control being tested uh, I'm gonna I'm not getting long yet or I'm not doing anything at the time being but yeah, I'm looking at these levels, but uh if uh, if I'm being completely honest this um, open of the week it's looking quite bearish and um, we could be actually going back to test the 110 80 level before going higher uh, again I can't predict uh, uh oh what is this I can't know I don't want to continue publishing anything well all right um, Jesus I'll be right back guys Again, I um, I can't predict a future price action, but what I can tell you is that, uh, I mean, the, the, what I can tell you are the levels that I am looking at. And the first level is, um, of course, the 112 level, which is the magnet. In my eyes, this is the magnet. I mean, if there's a level that's going to be tested, is the 112, okay? Uh, and uh, my other big levels are the 110.79 or 110.80. Actually, let me just change the coordinates on this trend line 80 and the 1985 all right these are my levels on the US dollar Japanese yen we will be we will definitely be taking a trade here on the US dollar Japanese yen um, but this is a very rangy um, kind of situation if we don't break with the 112 uh, all right if we don't break with the 112 and we really test the 112 uh, we are going to be putting on a short position again uh, on real time and time stamped on the premium community but for the time being, I mean, we're in no, no man's lands, just testing the point of control. Uh, ah, but I mean, I wouldn't take a trade here. It's, uh, it's not. Uh, there's not. There's no rationality behind it. Um, and uh, there's still magnets that 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 have yet to be tested. So these are my levels. And uh, finally, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. Canadian dollar this pair uh, ah this is very interesting because I wanted to show you this right uh, we took this short position a while time a while ago uh, when we were testing this trend line and as you can see this is not a pink trend line because this is a very strong trend line and uh, when we broke with this um, bearish flag we took the trade down to this level um, and then um, and then uh, again we took this trade because we, we failed to break higher or to start trading above the point of control but take a look at what happened uh, and this was the point of control up until this point right uh, up on, uh, until this point since March uh, the 7th all right since the beginning of March up until this point the point of control was uh, this level I don't know if I can make it available that she that uh, that you tell the coordinates no, the visibility no yeah, I can't do it so uh, well, yeah, uh, up until from from the beginning of March, right? Boom, from the beginning of March until 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 we started to look at the possibility of shorting the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. This was a point of control, and we took that trade, right? But now, if we go from the beginning of March until now. Uh, 
the point of control changes and that's completely normal because you sh if you don't know the point of control is the level where the most volume has been traded and it's very important to know that in the US dollar Canadian dollar the point of control are these lows I mean this level let me just com correctly uh, put it or correctly position this level all right and uh, I, I I don't like thick lines. I need to get a hold. I mean, I, I need to figure out uh, my levels. I know that, guys, but I'm constantly changing them because visually, um, I don't I don't like to get stuck using the same uh, colors and lines. All right. Yeah, but I don't like this. Well, I'll, I'll change it later. But the thing is that the 133.60 level, uh, the 130. 360 level is the level that I'm looking at on the US dollar Canadian dollar the reason is that the 133 uh, let's say 62 level all right the 133 62 level is the level that I'm looking at and uh, as you can see this looks like another bear flag that could be yielding uh, on the break to the low 70 pips all right this is the US dollar Canadian dollar. This is not the gap here or the, uh, well, this is not the uh, GBP Japanese yen. It doesn't yield, uh, well, well, when it runs, it runs, right? But, well, I mean, uh, not, not always can you take 300 pips out of the US dollar Canadian dollar. So basically what we're going to be doing is just waiting for a move to the downside on this, on this uh, uh, currency pair, but we are going to want to see uh, this pair trading below the 3362 level and below this point of control. The main reason is that uh, we could be looking at a move to this to this to this level, right? People or traders thinking that yes, the bear channel or the bear flag has been broken with. We are going to short the. I mean, we're going to short a lot of the US dollar Canadian dollar to see a move to the upside and a break above this trend line which can happen because here is where uh, buyers are going to be positioned and we need to break and uh, clear these orders or wipe um, this um, uh, buy orders in order for a move lower so I am not going to be trading or looking at to trade uh, the uh, break of this um, structure it's not even a strong structure right what i'm looking at is this level right here and basically this is what i'm looking at right now on the major currency pairs again if you want or if you like this uh, kind of analysis i um, create analysis all the time on all the major currency pairs and the minor currency pairs sometimes even exotic currency pairs on the premium channel um, and if you, I mean, if you like what you're hearing and, and watching, well, I'm leaving you a link below so you can take your trial, guys. I mean, don't miss out. This is great value. And, well, I hope I'll see you on the inside. And have a great trading.